Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on the situation in my country during this awful war with Russia. I have started at the beginning of this war and I plan to continue until we win Russian orcs and we definitely will with the help of our allies. So thank you very much for watching and demonstrating your support to my country, Ukraine. And today I want to speak about one of the possible scenarios of our victory, and it is a collapse of Russia. I don't have many Russian trolls on my channel at this season, but I believe even they will agree that uh, the general atmosphere around Russia and Putin is pretty negative, and also not many people continue treating Russia as something strong. Crazy, dangerous, yes, but not something strong. Because Putin, in his desire to take over Ukraine in three days, has lost many of uh, the purposes of his so-called military operation. At the beginning, they planned to capture Kyiv and its people in just three days. Then they wanted to uh, unite and build a corridor to Transnistria. Then they have decided they will protect people of some eastern and southern regions. And now, finally, they don't know what to do and start pushing uh, for negotiations. I know that uh, in the press there are lots of information that Putin and his friends try to persuade lots of African, Latin American presidents and other influential people to speak more often about the possibility of peace negotiations with Ukraine and that it is only Ukraine um, that continuously provokes Russia and makes them uh, punish us all the time. It is also common sense that uh, Russians will manipulate. Russians will continue terrorizing the world, but the majority of politicians, even former allies, I mean those strong countries like Turkey, like China, like some Central Asian countries, they see that Putin is no longer a strong uh, dictator. He is more of a dying dictator, and I'm not talking about his physical state, I mean his political influence. Because there were a huge a number of uh, situations that demonstrate how respect is falling towards Putin when people, I mean, other politicians make him wait, when he is not invited to various important international events, or he personally is afraid to have a press conference or to visit some places. For example, don't you think it's really funny that such a great warrior like, I don't know, Chief Commander Putin has never visited uh, Donbass, has never visited Kherson while it was still occupied. So they were trying to persuade that Russia is forever there. And you see, Ukraine has come back and returned back uh, Kherson. Same will happen to Crimea and other temporarily occupied territories. So for the majority of people who can think, who can observe, it is a vivid fact that Russia is not a strong country. It is a dying empire. And we know that the majority of empires collapsed at the end of the 19th century, at the very beginning of the 20th century. And it did not turn out into a tragedy. Many of them like let their colonies, let other occupied territories go and became successful, strong democratic states or monarchies. But uh, modern countries, innovative countries, democratic countries, open for changes and uh, other beautiful things. Russia is the last dying empire. <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the history of Soviet Union and at the history of modern Russia, you will find lots of symptoms that they still feel like an empire. And many of us in Ukraine and maybe even in Russia believe that their normality can come back with the normal sizes of that country. For example, when true Russia will be the size of Moscovia, and we all know that for centuries it was not Russia, it was Moscovia, Moscovia Tsardom. So some of the core Russian cities, Moscow, uh, I don't even know if uh, St. Petersburg, because many people who live in St. Petersburg claim they are very different from the rest of the Russians. They have lots of uh, property in uh, Finland, for example, and are more westward oriented. So, <clears throat> uh, collapse of Russia, fall of Russian empire is very, very likely because the way they feel that empire today uh, demonstrates their craziness. If you look at a typical, I don't know, event, political event in Russia, you will see a mixture of very weird things. 
like uh, Tsar Nicholas II, who was killed by communists and now is considered a martyr by Russian Orthodox Church, and it seems to me even a saint. And his portraits will be carried together with the portraits of Lenin and Stalin, who were actually the ones to blame for his execution. And all of that, I mean, portraits of Tsar Nicholas II, portraits of Lenin and Stalin will walk, for example, in an Orthodox ceremony carried together with icons. And you have this very serious existential question. What is wrong with these people? How come they don't understand that they, first of all, they are uh, <clears throat> taking enemies into one side? And secondly, for example, communists, come on, they destroy, destroy churches, they persecuted priests. Why Stalin is on an icon? We have uh, information on that about uh, like Stalin and his worship in one of our Soviet myth debunks videos. So if you're interested, you can come to that list and uh, check it. But uh, today, poverty, anger, mobilization, sanctions, um, like uh, Putin's regime, all of these facts can lead actually to the fall of uh, Russian Empire, to fall of Soviet myth. And as a result, Russia can divide into many smaller normal countries that can develop normal relations with the rest of the world, trade gas, trade oil, and still be available for negotiations, for some innovation, will forget about looking for enemies everywhere in the world. So for me, this is one of the best scenarios. And we all know that people in Siberia who live uh, behind the Urals, they often call themselves um, Sibiriaki, not Russians, when they describe their nationality, their cultural identity. And they are truly very different from Moscovites, for example. We have Tatarstan, which is not very Russian. Chechnya today is occupied by Russia and uh, puppet Kadyrov's regime. And uh, Yakutia, I have mentioned, which is in the far east of Russia, and uh, they have like Inuit people there, and they are pretty rich. And at the beginning of 90s, they even proclaimed independence and later were captured back to Russia economically. But there are lots and lots of lands, cultures, indigenous peoples who will benefit from the collapse of Russia. And the world can benefit from that because it will be much easier to negotiate oil, gas prices, and maybe to change the um, attitudes to build more or less democratic society because I'm not very like optimistic about Russians in general. But we see that global leaders are very much afraid of this situation. And many of them now try to force Ukraine to negotiate with Russia because they are afraid that if we win, I mean like 100% win this war, Russia will fall. And as a result of this fall, many new countries will appear and that they see as a geopolitical catastrophe. Because any change uh, can always lead to some unpredictable consequences and people are afraid of them, especially politicians. And I do understand this can be very problematic, can be dangerous economically, politically, culturally, maybe even militarily, but at the same time, it's unavoidable. So perhaps we have to stop being afraid and to finally reach this stage of uh, Russian future. Because saving Putin's face, saving Putin's regime, trying to keep Russia as one country, we will not succeed and I'm not sure if it is possible. It was Putin who started this war. It was Putin who actually fueled various dangerous processes inside of Russia and perhaps he will be the one to bury Russian empire. So my advice is, oh, I don't know, like global politicians, they don't listen to me, but perhaps we have to accept the idea that Russia sooner or later will collapse, many new countries will appear, and maybe we should start thinking how to live in this new world with a new map of ex-Russian empire. And Ukraine will be the one to thank or to blame for that, whatever you choose. Remember that I do not invite you to Telegram, Instagram and WhatsApp. These are various scammers. You can write me on email, you can find it on the description of my channel. <clears throat> Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. This helps to fuel our Soviet myth debunked process. 
Thank you for all the support that you demonstrate to my country, Ukraine. We are really grateful and we love the world very much. Believe me, Ukrainians are super grateful and super happy to be a part of this normal civilized world with its problems, but with its normal human problems. Slava Ukraini!